welcome to church. We're so excited that you're here. Yeah, you're like, we are. Guys, why are you wearing sunglasses? And Let me tell you. Yeah, no, actually, I would love to hear you what? tell them. What, 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 Listen, why? we're wearing sunglasses because we're grieving. Why? Fall. It's here. <laughs> right around the it's corner. Here. See, I was going to say that you were going to record a rap video. Oh. And that's why you had your sunglasses on. Yeah, no. See, why, why don't you just maybe like a couple bars right now? Oh. Like right now. <laughs> here we go. Let's go. One time. For okay, the viewers. Every time. One time. Right okay, now. Ready. Go. I'm gonna do it for you though. Oh, yeah, My name is Mike. Oh no no no! You have to. <laughs> no, you have to do it for them. <laughs> For the RTTN family? Yeah, the online family. Oh, I need you to rap gosh. about the online family. Okay, <clears throat> here we go. Yeah, like, go ahead. I'm part of the online family, and I like to rap. I'm joining this morning, so <laughs> I can't. You know, guys, we're, I can't. <laughs> we're glad that you're here. After that, you need to subscribe, yes, you need to because... like, and you definitely need to share because you have no idea what else is going to come out of your <laughs> mouth at, during the pre-show today. Wow. And listen, we're just excited that you're here. Get grandma and be like, yo, grandma, Yoli's rapping. Yes, yeah, she is. And, and it's she's not presents. It. She's it's, it, it's, it. it's She's rapping lyrics. <laughs> it's not even Christmas in your rapping. That's crazy. Look, I'm wow. out here. I got, I got bars now. What? Shout out me. This Listen. <laughs> Listen, but we're really glad you guys are here. Yes. Do us a favor. Like, comment, share all that good thing. Yes. Go put it in the group text. Tell them to come watch church. Tell all your friends. We're Post having it. fun. Yes, we we're are. Fun we're going to have a great service. And listen, this past weekend, Yo. what was it? Woman of Fire Women 2023. Of fire. We just got done with it. Mic drop. Literally, mic, mic drop. Yeah, imagine I just disappeared out of the <laughs> yes. frame. Wham! Yes, mic it drop. was Seriously, so good. Was that kind listen, of if you were here at Woman of Fire, let us know. We want to know chat. your testimony. Tell us what the Lord did through you. Listen, put it in the chat. Yes. Write it down. Put it in your notebook. Post it online and then tag RTTN Church yes. on Instagram. All the things that need to happen. We want to know about what God did in your life this weekend. Yes. There, you know, there's just, all, you know, every session just built on each other. Mm -hmm. And it was just wild. And it, I mean, it was woman of fire. You know, yeah. woman of fire, you just, you go and you go. Well, here we are. I have no idea what's going to happen. Mm -mm. And now we're on the other side of it and we're like, look yes, what God did. Exactly. It was a great weekend. Yoli, we got midweek coming up too. Yes. Mid Listen, our midweek format has been so incredible. And if you haven't been a part of it, you got to get here, whether it's uh, Chattanooga, Cleveland, or Athens. Yes. Get to one of our locations. Join our midweek services. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. We want to see you. In the building. Come on. And don't forget, if you have kids or if you have teenagers, we got Firebrand going on right over here in the Generations building and the kids department right Let's here. Let's go. Get to midweek. Also, Yoli, one of the, our, my most favorite things that we do here at our church mm -hmm. is house fires and interest groups. Yes. And it's just a time that we can come together and just build community yes. amongst everybody. Because how many know everybody needs somebody? Yeah, exactly. And I think house fires and interest groups are one of those things that everybody finds somebody and they find th same things that they like and yeah. the things that they, they can do together, whether it's read the word or whether it's go golfing, mm -hmm. get in a house fire interest group. Yes, interest groups. You know, hey, what? what's your favorite interest group, Yoli? I heard there was a thrifting one. I heard there was a thrifting, but mm -hmm. you know what? There's also bowling. What? The bowling is legit, but you know what? They're kind of like professionals. Yeah. But yeah. Mm -mm. anyone's Anyone can come. I'm there, and I'm not a professional. Hey, shout out our CFO, which is a professional. <laughs> yeah. Ryan is. Hodges <laughs> is a professional in, in bowling. <laughs> yes. Him and Mason, I, they, they, they they just get so serious. They're just like, all right, and three lines up. they do a little foot technique. Yeah, it's like, it's like why? They do a little, yeah. little, little flip and of the foot. a little twist. Yeah, They're I mean, it's, it's great. <laughs> as, you, as you can tell, we're professionals <laughs> in, in bowling. We so know what we're talking jo about. Join our interest group of bowling. <laughs> Uh, amateur bowling. So yes. listen. But anyways, but listen. get in a interest group, house fire. Yes. All those things are incredible. We're getting ready to jump into service. Yes. There's a little bit of a surprise, Yoli. Oh. And so people just got to keep their eyes glued to the screen. Don't but guess miss what? it. Yeah. It's We're going to hop into service. Yeah. So we love you guys. We'll see you later. See ya.
somebody next to you. I don't know if you know them or you just met them or you've known them for a long time. Say, it is so good to have you in the house of the Lord. It is better with you here. It is better to worship the Lord with you here. I love you. I've missed you. You look thinner. You look greater. Your face is glowing. This is the day that the Lord has made. Behold how good it is when brethren dwell each other and worship the name of the Lord Most High, who is in full expectation of all that God is about to do today. I don't know about you, but I know a God who goes from glory to glory. So if you ladies think this weekend was good, you don't know anything yet. God is about to blow your mind once again as we together enter his gates with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. I want to read to you as Pastor Daniela, she's going to help us, our pastor from Uruguay is going to help us pray today, but I want to read to you Psalms 30. It says, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. How many people has God lifted up? Come on. How many people has God lifted up? And have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. Oh Lord, you brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive. How many people can say this morning that God has kept you alive? It's been rough through the storms, through the tribulations, but God has kept me alive. That I should not go down to the to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. thanksgiving and into your courts with praise come on we enter your gates with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise oh we enter your courts with thanksgiving and we enter your courts with praise oh we enter your courts with thanksgiving
gonna make you free so you can worship him so you can praise him so you can adore him so you can exalt his name oh yes señor reprendemos toda fuerza del enemigo en el nombre de Jesús y le enviamos a tus pies Cristo nos declaramos libres libres, libres libres para adorar to worship you, Lord. I am free, Lord. I am free to worship you, Lord. I am free to praise you, Lord. Oh, we love you, Father. Now who's ready to sing to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? It doesn't matter what language you're doing it. Let's join the worship team this morning. Oh, come on. Can we lift up worship all over the room? Worship about woman of fire up. Can we just begin to rejoice? Just 
cross. Can we just lift up a great praise to our Jesus, the Lamb that was slain by His blood and the word of our testimony. We overcome. You know what? In heaven, when they're around the throne, it's not a patty cake hand clap, but it says that the sound of those worshiping Jesus is like rolling.
to fellowship with people more than we come to fellowship with him right now is your moment to talk to him why don't you hug his neck why don't you ask him how his day is i know this this breaks the mold for some of us but right now i want you to get caught up in fellowship with him because right now he's here and this is his house and i don't want you to worry about who's around him i don't want you to worry about what's going to be next i want you to get caught up in fellowship with the one who has prepared a table before you this morning 
to feed you. He's come to fellowship with you. And right now there is a community of angelic beings that are fellowshipping with him. They're crying holy. They're, they're throwing their crowns down. There's thunder and lightning. But I'm going to tell you what he's listening for this morning is the song of the redeemed. What he's listening for this morning is the fellowship of his sons and daughters. So these next few moments are a gift. Because time doesn't allow us to spend time with him in most of our lives. But right now in this service, we're going to carve out just three or four minutes for you to fellowship with him. So I want you to open your mouth. I want you to open your heart. I want you to begin to commune with him and get caught up in a realm that he wants to take you to this morning to feed you, to nourish you, to minister to you. His fellowship brings joy. His fellowship brings joy. So let's just do it right now. Jesus, your love is so amazing. And this joy, I can't explain it. You see, I'm caught up in the fellowship. I'm getting caught up in the fellowship. Jesus, your love is so amazing.
Sing that sweet name in this room one more time. I want you to run up here really quick wherever she is Kimmy and Pastor Daniela get ready come on up to help me pray I know don't be mad I'm gonna explain this song really quick we're gonna sing it again but I want you to share if you can remember what you shared with me from Psalms 23 Um, my mom recently introduced to me and Judah the Blue Letter Bible, and basically it's like you can read the actual Hebrew and the meaning of the words. Um, and as I was studying that, um, it's the part when it says, Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Psalms 23. And so I wanted to read into that a little bit more. And yes, it also means comfort, but it means a sigh of relief. And so those things that stress us or worry us when the enemy attacks us, his rod not only brings us comfort, but it brings us relief and peace in the circumstances that we're going through. She's prophesying to you that the rod and the staff of the shepherd, they don't just guide us and protect us. That Hebrew word, everybody just give a sigh in here. It means to sigh in relief. Because his rod and his staff, he's your shepherd. No matter what's going on around you, you know what you get to do? <sighs> yes. Get me into Yeshua before I get in the wrong key. Uh, uh, it's your sigh of relief. Say his name and sigh. his name and sigh in relief yes you throw those hands up I'm telling cancer yes you to go into what we call pastoral prayer but right now the Lord is your shepherd and what I saw happening in the spirit as we were fellowshipping with him was just as clear as the table I had on this stage yesterday he has prepared a table for his people right now this is a table of communion and fellowship and you get to choose if you want to sit in that chair he has for you and at this table it's everything you need. Some of you just need to pull up to the table and you need to say, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Some of you need to sit at the table he's prepared for you and this morning you just need to sigh in relief that Yahweh is near. You need to take that disease, that sickness, that report, what's going on in your house, the stress in your home, the swirl that's going on in your marriage. Right now you need to pull up at the table. You need to see the shepherd with his rod and his staff watching over you you need to sit down and you just need to sigh and you need to lay it down 
And I'm here to tell you the meal he prepares for you is a meal that will heal you. It will restore you. It will satisfy you. That's why we get caught up in his fellowship because that's the only place you can find joy unspeakable and full of glory. So right now, as we've ministered to him, he turns and he ministers to us. Don't we serve such a good God that he prepares the table before us? So with every hand lifted right now, Father, we come to the table of our good shepherd today. And we decree yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory forever. And right now, Father, let your kingdom come and your will be done in this place. Let heaven be released, Father. Catch us up into the fellowship of another dimension where your will is done. Father, your kingdom comes. Let it be done in every seat right now in the altars and in the aisleways. Let healing bread be served to your children today. Let the wine of joy be poured out for your children today. Let the oil of restoration be poured out right now in Jesus' name. And Father, we come to the table and we receive from you. So I'm going to ask Pastor Kimberly, and in case you didn't know, this is Pastor Daniela. She is our RTT and pastor for RTT in Uruguay. Someone needs to give some love to Pastor Daniela. I want her to pray over you. And if you have a need in this place right now, whatever the the need of healing or intervention is, right now the table is set. Pastor Danielle is going to release the word and the declarations of prayer. And I want you to receive from him. In fact, if you know this moment, it's for you. And you need to come to the table because you need a miracle. You need breakthrough in your life. Would you raise your hand all over this place right now? Raise them up high. Raise them up high as a sign of faith. Say, I'm coming to the table, Jesus. Father, their hands are lifted because they're coming to the table. Pastor Daniel, will, Daniela, will you just pray? Before I pray, I want to say something to you. And my mom was not able to have children she had spontaneous abortions and before I was born she had two spontaneous abortions when she was 33 years old she found out that I was in her womb and she went to the, to the witchcraft of the witches so that they do witchcraft so that I could be born but what the enemy did not know is that the eyes of God were already over me and the miracle is that we will not stop speaking about the wonders of God and the miracle is that you are alive and you can open your mouth Because the fact that you are here is already a miracle. And I have a good news for you, church. The miracle maker, maker is here. And he is not only able to heal your body, but he's able to heal your mind, your heart, your emotions, your finances, your relationship. So whatever the miracle is that you are asking for. 
this morning about the story of Abraham on the mountain where God had asked him to sacrifice his most beloved treasure and in that mountain where Abraham thought he would lose everything he actually gained everything because the Bible says that God spoke to him and said there is a ram I have made provision for you here and for the first time in scripture we hear the name Jehovah Jireh Abraham called that place this is Jehovah Jireh and there's many of you that have been here all weekend or you just got here this morning and God has asked you to sacrifice something he said don't think of time the way that you want to think of time don't think of relationships the way that you want to think of him don't think about money the way that you want to think of them that you are in sorrow because God has asked you to sacrifice it all but I'm here to remind you that God has made a provision for you that you have no concept for it will blow your mind what God has already prepared for you in the thicket and I tell you this morning from the Lord get to know Jehovah Jireh Jehovah Jireh is not only the God who comes when you need something he is the God who's already made provision for you he is the God that says I'm asking you to give it all but it's because I have so much more Jehovah Jireh so if you're here this morning or you're watching me online and God has asked you to sacrifice it all maybe it's just me and I've been in turmoil saying God I feel like I've already given you everything but he says Kim there's more there's more that you have to lay on the altar of sacrifice and if that's you if you're like me I want you to raise your hands sometimes there's healing tied to those things sometimes there's provisions tied to those things but if you see someone around you will you go and you pray for them I hear the Spirit of the Lord saying there is something coming for you that you have no reference point you're in sorrow about something small and I'm about to blow your mind with so much more Jehovah Jireh and what Zion shared can you imagine Abraham with the knife in his hand and his son tied to that altar when God says you don't have to sacrifice it? Abraham, can you imagine the sigh of relief that came over Abraham? That is the sigh of relief that God is trying to bring to you this morning. It's going to be okay because he has so much more. Lord, in the name of Jesus, all to Jesus I surrender. I surrender all. All of it at your feet, Jesus. Because surely you are the one with eyes like fire and hair like wool. Surely you are our beloved. Surely you are the one who is worthy of any sacrifice, oh God. So we say, come Jehovah Jireh. Come Jehovah Jireh. Come Jehovah Jireh. For you have made a way for us, God. You have made a way for us, God. You've made provision for us, God. Our lives belong to you, Yeshua. Yeshua. For we can 
truly say, oh God, this morning that yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. Come on, sing it up. Yours is the kingdom, yours is the power, yours is the glory forever. Amen. Oh, yours is the kingdom, yours is the power. give the Lord just a praise in this house. If you think we're done worshiping, we're not done worshiping yet. We're going to continue on. I have just a few quick announcements for you. If you're a first time guest in this house, would you just lift up your hand? First time guest? Yes, we got first time guests everywhere. Let's welcome them this morning. If you're a first time guest, text guest 423 It's on your screen. Text that number. We just want to reach out to you. A couple of important announcements. We want to let you know that this week on Wednesday night, our midweek, we'll be over in the, in the uh, uh, Redemption Building with the Blue Steps with our equip sessions this week. I uh, want to let you know that we have new house fires and interest groups that are starting up October 1st. So make sure you go on the website and look at those. Uh, also want to make sure Firebrand knows there is no Bible study tonight. 
And then lastly, as you leave today, I want you to make sure you're out in the lobby. There's going to be several ladies out in the lobby uh, handing out these information cards, and you just scan the QR code. It's got a very important video message from Pastor Devin talking about women's ministry. And uh, the first service is coming up Sunday, next Sunday, September 24th at 6 p.m. here at the church. Now, I'm going to ask you if you would please stand back up. Like I told you, we are not done worshiping this morning. I don't know if it was divine encounter or just Plano. This is what I was reading this morning, but I got up to read this morning and I was in First Chronicles, the end of the, of the book. And David is preparing Solomon for the kingdom. And David takes up an offering, not for Solomon, before the Lord's house. You see, sometimes we get to this part of the service and we think worship is done, but worship is not done. This is where we give glory to the Lord. This is where the rubber meets the road. And this is where I have to have faith to pull out that checkbook and say, God, I'm going to give you what is due to you for your glory because you are Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh. You are my provider. This is not the time that we can just disengage. This is when we continue with worship. And I was reading that this morning and I was reading the prayer of David over that offering. And he said, Lord God, we have given you out of what you gave us. It's all yours. Every bit of this, God. Yeah, we went out and we fought the battles. Yeah, we went out, Lord, and we, we took the sword and we slaughtered people and we took plunder, Lord God, but you gave the victory. You gave us the plunder. All of this is yours. And David said when he was sacrificing at the threshing floor of Ornan, where they would build the temple that Solomon built, and David made the plans for it. And he said, I will not worship the Lord with something that doesn't cost me. This is not a rebuke church, but will you worship the Lord with something that costs you this morning? Will you give to him out of what he's given to you? I want to, I want to read this to you out of David's prayer. O oh Lord, our God, from your hand comes all of this abundance that we have provided to build your house for your holy name, and all of it belongs to you. I know, my God, that you test the heart and you delight in uprightness. And all these things I have given willingly with an upright heart, and now you have seen, Lord God, your people who present here giving joyfully and willfully to you. Can we pray that today? I want to do it a little differently. If we can do some, I want some, I want some worship. I want some worship. I want some triumphal worship entry. Uh, I, I want us right now when we give, when, I, when we pray over this offering, we pray, pray a blessing over you. I want us to come down or give on the app or give on online, however you're giving. And I want us to do it with worship and cheerfulness and joy because it is the Lord's offering to build his house, to build his kingdom. And we're going to give to him sacrificially today out of a heart of worship. Just as I was singing my lungs out down there, I'm going to empty my pockets for him this morning. Lord God Almighty, this is all yours. Everything we see is yours, oh God. And right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before you with worship and honor and praise to you today, Lord God. Not just the fruit of my lips, Lord God, but the fruit that you have blessed me with in my bank account. I worship you this morning, Lord God. It is yours for the building of the kingdom, for the building of your house, for your house is great and greatly to be praised, Lord God. Your kingdom is a kingdom for the last forever. Lord God, that there is no end. And God, we worship you this morning with the fruit, Lord God, that you have provided to us. Lord God, bless your people. Bless their sacrifice this morning. You are Jehovah Jireh. Lord God, you will prove yourself to them. God, open the windows of heaven and pour out blessings. 
that they cannot contain. We will worship the Lord with something that costs us this morning, Lord God. And I pray, bless your people. Bless this offering. Multiply it for your kingdom in Jesus' mighty name. Let's worship the Lord as we give this morning. up this morning I tell you if you'll be a cheerful giver then you won't be a a mean stingy person and you'll learn it's more blessed to give than receive and I don't know if you ever have giving goals to the Lord maybe you don't but sometimes in my life I'm like Lord I want to be able to do this or do that or give to that person or do that and you set a giving goal and God gives seed to the sower Sometimes he doesn't give to us because we don't tell him the destination of what he's going to give us. But if you'll partner with his heart, he'll put seed in your hand. But this is the key to offering. This is why you got to be a cheerful giver. Until you have what you want to give, you just make up for it in praise. You give what you got and then you just give him an offering of praise until your praise and your offering match. And some of you, if your praise and your offering match, You're not going to have much to give in your life. But I praise him big. All right. It's going to be that kind of morning. I'm Devin. Good morning. It is not Pastor Kevin this morning. I begged him. I pleaded with him. Tried to kidnap him. I understand you want to hear from your pastor today, but you get to hear from me. I'm going to make it so painless. I love you, but don't you even tell me you're tired today. I don't even have a voice that has strength, but my spirit is so alive, okay? 
And so it's on mornings like this, you just have to say, flesh, you know what? You're not in control. You're not even going to be here in the end. So I'm not listening to you right now. I am pressing in to eternal things. So I have the joy of the Lord this morning. You're going to have to pray that my voice holds up and I'm going to deliver the word of the Lord very briefly. Y'all are going to be so shocked how short this is because what God's going to do may be long. Warning. What God's going to do may be long. But I, it's New Year's. Say Happy New Year to your neighbor. Shana Tova or Shana Tova. Somebody can say it better. Pastor Lee, you can say it so much better. I've got Pastor Lee, Pastor Stephanie, Prophetess, uh, Pastor, Prophetess, Apostle. What do you want me to call you, Demetria? <laughs> Psalmist. And then you already met Pastor Daniela, Alba DeVita, a lawyer all the way from Guatemala who's worked for us. How long have we known each other, Alba? 10 years. Can you all welcome all of these special guests that are on the front row that I'm so honored to serve with and have you here and all my other friends who hung out from Women of Fire. You're just gonna have to forgive me if I repeat some things. When things get in your spirit, they just don't go away. But I know it's gonna be hard to believe I did not finish my message yesterday and I just have one little point for today. One little point is my intention. I don't know what the Lord wants to do. One little point. Because if you didn't know it, we are celebrating Rosh Hashanah. It is the new year for Israel and for the Jewish people. So we operate according to a Gregorian calendar and our new year is not yet. And that's okay. But Israel operates on a lunar calendar and it's the feast of Rosh Hashanah, which is when they celebrate new year. So now look at your neighbor again and say Shana Tova or happy new year. And that is so important. I think as much as I wanted my husband to be here who is now older than me, yesterday he celebrated his birthday. I am the younger one today for a short period of time. I actually am excited that of all days, I get to talk to you on what I believe is a day of prophetic shifting. I mean, I just wanna release that over your life and over this church, and then you can go have lunch with your family and enjoy Firebrand, enjoy a night off, um, and we're gonna celebrate the new year. So are you ready? Oh, this is gonna be so fun. Let's turn to Exodus chapter 12, and I'm going to start in verse one. And I'm going to read just a little bit. I'm going to read for a little bit. I'll stop when I stop because that's where I stop. Let's start in verse one. Just keep it rolling on the screen. When you have it, say amen. (laughs) Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt saying, this month will mark the beginning of months for you. It is to be the first month of the year for you. Tell all the congregation of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each man is to take a lamb for his family, one lamb for the household. But if the household is too small for a lamb, then he, it, he and his nearest neighbor are to take one according to the number of the people. According to each person eating, you are to make your count for the lamb. Your lamb is to be without blemish, a year old male. <laughs> They killed the boys, not the girls. God bless their heart. You may take it from, I'm trying to make y'all laugh this morning. Happy New Year, y'all. This is gonna be a word that changes your life. Shake your neighbor and say, wake up in your spirit. Thank you. So I'll say it again, because it's great. Your lamb is to be without blemish, a year old male. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You must watch over it until the 14th day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to slaughter it at twilight. They are to take the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the cross beams of the houses where they will eat and they are to eat the meat that night roasted over a fire. They are to take the blood and they are to put it over the doorposts of the home that night and they are to consume the lamb. Would you pray for me? Really pray for me. And I'm going to pray for you that God's word is delivered, goes deep in your heart today and produces a shift, a transition in this atmosphere. Father, I love you today and we do, we celebrate Feast of Trumpets with you and we thank you that your voice is being heard 
all over the globe in the nations today. We thank you the nation of Israel is hearing the trumpeting of your voice. And Father, can it be no exception in this sanctuary today? May we hear the loud shouting of your voice in this strategic season, Father, as we come into alignment with you. Father, please anoint me today. Let Devin step right into the office that you have anointed me to walk in. Let my words be anointed by you. God, don't let me keep these people here one moment longer than you want them. But God, don't let me leave before you're finished with what you want to do. Father, we have come to hear from you today. We have come to receive it deep in our hearts and in our homes. And I ask that this word would be confirmed by the moving of your spirit. Father, don't let it be enticing words of man's wisdom, but let there be power and demonstration of the Holy Spirit in this place. God, do what you have come to do today. And we give you permission to be God in this house. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated until you want to stand. So here's a little review for those that weren't able to hear, or maybe you've not got to do your own personal research, but we did just cross over into a new year on the lunar calendar or the Jewish calendar, and we just crossed over from 5783 to 5784. Um, and we, we get that timing because we look at the sun and the moon for the cycles of both of our calendars. I'm not going to do a, a lesson on this right now, but God started time for us. God does not need time. God lives in eternity. Eternity has no time. And I don't know if you ever did this as a child or it's still, you do this now. You try to imagine living forever in heaven and it makes your head hurt because it is very hard for our carnal minds to think outside of time because since man was created, he was placed within the constriction of time. But God is on the outside of time. Pastor Michelle helped us learn that this weekend. He works around the clock, not around the clock like you do in your daily job. He works around the clock, like outside of your clock. God did not place himself in time when he put man in time. God remained outside of time in eternity when he put you in time. And you're constriction in time is only temporary. In other words, time has a timeline. Time has an expiration date. Time itself is not eternal. Time only has so long that it will endure. And there will be a day that time, as you know, it ceases and you will be invited into an eternal realm that never ends. And right now your mind can't even imagine it, but you were made to live in eternity. And even though you think you like time, you were not created to live forever in time. And in fact, time is usually the enemy of eternity. Time is usually competition to eternity because most of the time eternal things cannot fit into the convenience of your time. And we are entering a season where the clock has changed in the natural, but more importantly, there has been a shift in the spirit because this is not a calendar established by men. Time is established by God. And we are crossing over into 5784. So everybody say the number four. It's a really important number this year. In fact, I challenge you, if you're like bored in your Bible study and you're wondering what you can dive into, do a number study on the number four. And chances are you're going to find so much revelation about what God wants to do in this year because four is an important number. And I just think it's so funny that on the fourth day of creation, everybody say four, guess what was created? Anybody know trivia question in the room? the sun and the moon, which are the precipice of time. And that's why in the year 5784, which is what you just stepped into, whether you realize it or not, time is going to be very pivotal, very important. On the fourth day, God created the sun and the moon. He put them in the sky, both to tell us times and seasons. So for those of you that are like, Pastor Devin, I'm confused. Are we supposed to celebrate New Year's now? New Year's in January? Am I supposed to be on a Gregorian calendar? Am I supposed to be on a lunar calendar? The answer is both. 
Both. God created the sun and the moon to tell time. And they are separate, but there are times they converge in unity. And it is just a prophetic message to our nation. I did not want to get on this, but it just comes right out of my spirit. But I'm here to tell you, if you look at the sun and the moon, it speaks a message to those who watch them for their time. Because the United States looks at the sun and the Gentile nations look to the sun. And I'm here to tell you, when there are signs in the sun in the sky, God is sending a message to the Gentile nations. He's sending a message to the United States. When there's a solar eclipse or a solar flare or when, when those things happen, God is sending a message to the Gentiles. But the Jews, they look to the moon. And I'm here to tell you, when you say things happen in the moon, just like in the book of Revelations, when the moon turns to blood, it's because Revelations isn't about us. It's about the Jewish people. And anytime something shifts in the moon and mark my word, if the sun or the moon, anything cool happens all year, God is speaking a message to a particular people group because that is where they look for their times and seasons. And so the moon will shift. The moon will have cool things happen when God is speaking to the Jewish people. Are you with me? And it's so cool to me that Jesus said that the sun will rule the day and the moon will rule the night. I'm in the book of Genesis. And there's also a scripture where Jesus said, hey, you better work work why it's day because night is coming when no man will work. What are you saying, Pastor Devin? The sun represents the age of the church. That's what you're in right now. It's the age where the church is domination, dominating the revelation of Jesus and dominating of the gospel. But there's a moment where the church won't be relevant because we probably won't be here. There's going to be a moment where we won't be here because the Lord is coming back for us. And then it will be the moon. It will be a day of night when no man can work, but it will be a day where the revelation of Jesus comes to the Jewish people. It will be the night where revelation is unfolded. I know that you want to be here to see all that scary stuff, but it's not really for us. Revelation is an exciting book where God finally pulls the blinders off the eyes of his people and they see Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah once and for all. Do you see why four is so important? And four, you're going to see time turned upside down. Oh, I got to get right here to my notes. This year is a year where time will be turned upside down. This is a year where we're going to recognize man has really messed up time. And God is really about to put time back in order. It's so funny, but as I was studying, even the Jewish year, do you know there's even conflict over what year we're in? Some people predict we're like two years off and we don't even know where we are in our, our Gregorian calendar. Man just has a way. We just are fallible. We are just not perfect. We just have a way of messing up time. And to the best of our ability, we think we are on the right time frame. But I'm here to tell you, we can't even determine if the earth is thousands of years old or billions of years old. We're still arguing over over when Genesis chapter one actually happened, we don't really have a concept of the time we live in. There is only one person who holds time in his hands and that is Yahweh. And I'm here to tell you, this is the year God wants to unravel time as we know it so he can reset us into time as he sees it. So anytime there is an unravel, unraveling, it's because God has a reestablishing to happen. Is this too much this morning? Did you have your coffee? I hope you did because I came to give you meat today. Anytime there is an unraveling of something, it's not because God enjoys destruction. God loves perfection and completion. And anytime something exists that does not reflect his perfection or his completion, he will shake it, he will tear it down, he will uproot it, and he will unravel it so he can reestablish what is better and what is good. And let me just help somebody on a personal level this morning. Anytime God seems to take something from you or destroy something in your life or remove something and you get tempted to get in the blues and start crying, you just remember my words today. If God ever takes something, it's because what you have is inferior to what he wants you to have. If he ever removes something, it's because what you're holding on to is less than what he wants to give you. If he ever empties your hands, it's because he has something bigger than what they could have held and held on to what you had. God does not take away unless 
he's going to give. That's how Yahweh works. Look at Job. Job lost a lot, but at the end of the story, he gained twice as much as he ever lost because God will never take something from you that he doesn't pour more out on you than you had to begin with. So you don't have to weep if things start shaking this year. You don't have to weep in a season that it may feel like there's a loss. You don't have to get nervous if it feels like chaos is happening around us. I didn't even know that was a scientific word till this weekend. I'm going to make a t-shirt that says chaology. It's a real thing in physics. In physics, transition is characterized, thank you, Pastor Paula, by something called chaology. And I'm here to tell you, I have always despised chaos. And if your life is stuck in a cycle of chaos, it's because you got stuck in transition. You started something that you didn't let God finish. God doesn't mean for you to dwell in chaos, but he will surely allow a swirl of chaos to put you in the right place and separate you from what the enemy wants you to remain stuck in. And I'm here to tell you the number four, you're about to see a chaotic chaology mess over time. But it's not because God's lost it. It's not because the world's coming to an end yet. It's not because the church needs to go get on Prozac and, and have counseling and we can sit around and try to figure out how to handle what's happening. I'm here to tell you, we learned some powerful lessons a few years ago. We aren't gonna panic when chaos hits anymore. In fact, I'm gonna call you to the sanctuary to have a praise party because when the chaology hits, it means God's will's finally invading this nation. God's will finally invading the bride. We need change. And I'm here to tell you, change is here. So as I was praying about the new year, all I kept seeing was images of the Mad Hatter. And it's probably because of my husband's own obsession with Disney and, and that that's just the realm we're in. And in the Mad Hatter, it was clocks and chaos and everything was upside down and color. And, and, and the Lord said, Devin, I'm about to turn time upside down. And I began to really reflect in my own heart how much time has become a restriction to the kingdom in our lives. How much time has become an idol. And I forgot to do it at the beginning of service. Y'all are gonna lose your breath and I'm gonna do it right now. Y'all know where I'm going, turn it off. How much, even in our services, when I get up here, I'm like, okay, God, this is what you wanna say. What time is it? I'm so sorry, Father, there's not time. Oh, I love you, but some of you do it. That Apple watch right there, and you're like, whoa, whoa, Jesus. Oh, sorry, God. Got somewhere to be. See what time it is? See what time it is? And God says, do you know I created that time? Do you know I'm not confined by that time? You can take 60 minutes on that watch and try to do something I can do in 30 seconds. If you would just put that watch down and focus on me and let me be the God of time. So I did it. I turned it off. I'm not, gonna, I'm not operating by that anymore this year. But you know what's so sad? Let me just tell you, I'm not so spiritual. I, kill, I still keep looking at a blank screen because we have been conditioned to filter everything in our life through our time. What we do, where we go, how much we pray. Where we're, it's all about time. And listen, don't be crazy and be late to work tomorrow and tell them a prophet told you to flush your watch down the toilet. I know you gotta be places, but quit flashing your watch at Yahweh. When you're dealing with people in the flesh realm, go ahead and use your watch. But when you tap into eternity, take it off. Put it under your seat. Put it in your purse. Zip it away. Because eternity and time, they just don't mix. So I did think about it, and I'm not going to do it. But in our school, we take away cell phones when they come in the door. Because I love you, but I lived half my life without a cell phone, and I turned out just fine. So I figure in an eight hour school period, they can focus on God and math and put the cell phone up and they can check their Instagram at 2.30. So we have these little fancy lockers and they check their phone in and I thought, dear God, I want to watch Ben in the lobby of church. See, some of you are having a cardiac. I'm going to take all your watches and I want to say, God, here we are. You tell us what you want to do. And can I tell you what's crazy? We would probably get out earlier if we just let him do what he wanted to do in the time he wanted to do it. 
Do you know that? I have been in some of the craziest services where I thought surely it was six hours later and it's been like an hour and a half and I'm like, Yahweh, you do things fast. If I just get out of the way, I'm telling you, I told the ladies, it's like dream world. Anybody ever fallen asleep for five minutes and you wake up and you've had a dream that takes you 20 minutes to tell? That is eternity. That is tapping into God time. And I'm here to tell you, God will do so much more with our little, if we would just quit telling him to bow to the God of time. That was free, not in my notes, but the clock is gone. (laughs) Doesn't mean I'm gonna preach longer. It doesn't mean I'm gonna preach freer. So time is about to be turned upside down. And God is about to do some things with time that may seem uncomfortable, They may even seem a little unsettling at times, but it is simply to unravel time as we know it because we've made a mess of it. And God is trying to align earthly time with his agenda from heaven because time is so short. You're about to see a shift of the gears in the kingdom and some acceleration to fulfillment in your personal life and in the body of Christ, even in the nations of the earth. Because God in his divine sovereignty and love is stepping to the plate to make up and for and restore some things that have been wasted, have been put out of order, have been misaligned by the hearts of humanity. And if I could just be real, a church that has disconnected from the secret place. (laughs) A lack of information and a lack of insight is always a reflection of the lack of intimacy. And it's the reason why when Peter was trying to figure out what Jesus was saying to him, when Jesus was basically telling him, you're going to die for me, and Peter looks and says, what about him to John? And Jesus is like, that ain't your business. That's my boy. I talk to him and I don't talk to him through anybody. So I'm not going to tell you what I've already told him. That's called intimacy. And it's why later at the Last Supper when Jesus said somebody's going to betray me, did you notice who they asked? Nobody knew he was talking about him. Peter's like, John. Because John knew everything. You know why? John wasn't really loud. He wasn't a good preacher. John's pretty uneventful all through the scripture except for one thing. He's always beside him. He's always close. And if you want to know what's going on this year, then just get in your prayer closet because intimacy will bring insight and information. And I'm here to tell you, God is not desiring for his church to be caught off guard by anything. And in the past few years in this nation, when we have been caught off guard, I'm the first to admit it's because the church has been void of intimacy and fellowship with Jesus. And because of that, we lack insight and information concerning his heart. And then we look just like the world because we're scrambling and reacting to things we should have been prepared for because we serve the God who knows the end from the beginning. And the Bible says he doesn't do anything in the earth without revealing it to his prophets first. It is his desire to bring you into knowledge. But if you disconnect from your secret place, he can't even talk to you. God whispers to make you come close. So in this year, it's going to be really important that you draw up to the table to fellowship. And that's a door I'm not preaching today, but one I cannot get past. And we are about to enter a time of epic proportions, an epic epoch. I'll teach another day, but a division of time where unusual things are going to happen and history will be made. And it's going to be amazing because God is unraveling time to resettle things. And I just proved that point to you. I read something to you that blew my mind, blew my mind. And it was from the book of Exodus. And I knew as we turn into the year 5784, every word, every letter in the Hebrew language has a numeric value, which means every number in the Hebrew language has a letter attached to it. And what's so cool about this language is letters are pictures. They have so much uh, depth to their shape and their dimension and what they show, they are pictures. Um, and it's, it's so amazing to study those things. And that's where this revelation comes from. When you hear people start releasing what the new year means, it's because they 
they take those numbers and they apply the letters to them and what they symbolize. So I'm gonna do that for you really quick. And those of you who've already heard this, especially my students who have heard this for six weeks, you should be able to help me break this down. So what does the number five mean? Grace, thank you. What does the number seven mean? Completion or perfect will of God. What does the number eight mean? New beginnings. And this is the one that's the new one, but you should know by now, what does the number four mean? It's the dalit. It's, it's the picture of the door. So the number four actually looks like a door. Even though we see it as a number, it is actually, it can look like a door. And that letter for door actually has the numerical value of four. So I hope I'm making this really simple. So if I was to like try to make the new year that is in numbers, break it down into a sentence, I would say it this way. God is empowering us with grace to operate in his divine and perfect will by completing what he started so that he can begin a new thing in our lives through the venue of doors. Now, there was a season I would have said open doors, but that would have been Devin adding to the text because that symbol doesn't mean open doors. It just means doors. And the reason why that's important is doors are made to do two things, not just one. In the church, we just want them to do one thing, right? We're like, just please, just the door that does one thing. And what do we like a door to do? Open. But what else is a door created to do? And for whatever reason in the church, we have made open doors, signs of God blessing, and closed doors like rejection or the work of the enemy. And that's all good until you go home tonight and you want to go to sleep and you don't leave your door open. You don't leave your door open because you're really thankful it shuts and you're even more thankful it locks because you don't want somebody coming in. You don't want a thief coming in or an intruder coming in or an enemy coming in to take what belongs to you or to harm you. So I'm here to tell you this will be a year not just of open doors but of closed doors. But we as a church are going to learn sometimes to celebrate the closed door more than the open door. We're going to learn to appreciate that blessing is not just a attached with an open door, but sometimes you got to thank God. He shut a door in your life. He finished something. He closed it. And especially if you've had an enemy pursuing you from your past, you're going to thank God that this is the year he's going to shut some doors that no man can ever open again. And he's going to open doors that no man can shut for you. It is the key of David. Isaiah 22, 22. And it's so powerful because Pastor Kevin's been preaching this all year at our church that God has called us to reestablish the tabernacle of David. And if you don't know that message, you should go back and look it up. It'll help you understand what we're building here. And we're actually in the process of trying to establish a tabernacle of David, a house of prayer. And it was prophesied again this weekend, word after word, saying this will be a house of prayer, a tabernacle of David where the incense of God burns 24 hours a day, day and night, night and day let the incense rise where the servants of the Lord lift their hands by night in the house of the Lord declaring worship to him and David spent millions of dollars Ryan he spent millions of dollars in his budget just to make sure worship was going forth to Yahweh day and night night and day but with the tabernacle of David ready with fellowship like that with intimacy like that like that guess what comes with it keys like that authority and access. So when you're establishing a tabernacle of David, you better believe the keys of David will rest on your life and on that house. And the keys of David are in Isaiah 22, 22. He will open doors that no man can shut and he will shut doors that no man can open. It was the keys that was given to the church of Philadelphia, which has a whole other message. It was the church of brotherly love, the church of unity. You want to know why Pastor Kevin preaches on unity? You want to know why we toppled a giant of division? Because you won't carry authority if you don't walk in unity. Do you hear me? And the keys of David were given to the church of brotherly love because God could trust his authority with those who were operating in unity. And this is the year God's about to whip out the keys of David. It is the year of doors. And I will 
I, I can just bet your bottom dollar, Pastor Kevin is going to preach on all those doors. You're going to hear about them. There are four doors that the Lord is opening this year, but I got to focus on something else this morning because God is going to put the pedal to the metal. There's going to be a wind. The only way I can liken it is a swoosh of acceleration. Have you ever been standing next to an interstate or running, I guess it's from experience out of stupidity, running near busy roads and you feel the swoosh of a car and you really can't even get a visual, but you feel the wind of it passing before you even know what has passed you. Here is the kingdom and here is Yahweh this year. He said, I'm about to defy time. I'm about to work outside of time. In fact, God is saying, I'm about to confuse time. I'm about to surprise time. I'm about to deny time of the authority she has been given. And I'm about to redeem what has been taken from my people and from my nations, from my land. And I don't know how to say this without just saying it. Hopefully I'll explain it later. There are two key nations, the sun and the moon, that you will see extreme shifts over this year. And it's the nation that you are dwelling in the United States and the nation of Israel. Just put it in your pocket and one day you're going to say, I think Pastor Devin said that, not me, Yahweh. Don't even put my name on it. Say, I think God said that. And there's going to be shifting over those two nations because those two nations will be like an epicenter of an earthquake that will send reverberations to the nations of the earth. So you hear me, oh God, I didn't plan to go here without Kevin on the front row. But there will be extreme assignments to misalign the United States and Israel this year. Because God has assigned an alignment of time between the lunar and the Gregorian calendar. He's about to defy them both and put them in a swirl that will make them one. He's about to align his words over the United States and Israel, and I am prophesying to you right now, the enemy knows it, he senses it, and there is a deep welling up assignment from the pit of hell to divide the United States and Israel. We're about to enter an election cycle and every pastor in America is like about to vomit because the church couldn't survive the last one. Can we just make our mind up? We're going to be the church of Philadelphia in here and we're not going to lose our keys over what's happening in politics and we're going to remain unified. Can we make up our mind? Good. Because I know there are a lot of issues and I have a different philosophy than probably most pastors and leaders because the secret is I'm really not a pastor. I am a prophet, kind of, on some days. I actually care about what happens in our government. Not because salvation comes from our government or any world leader. I hate to burst your bubble, church. We don't even have to have a Christian in office for God to do what he wants to do. Oh, Pastor Devin, how can you say that? Look at Nebuchadnezzar. Look at Cyrus. Look at the wicked pagan kings that God would. The Bible says that the heart of the king is in the hand of the Lord. It's a river. He can turn in whatever direction he wants to. Quit being fooled by the facade of a man in a suit thumping a Bible that doesn't really have God in his heart. Jesus. So quit worrying if the leaders love Jesus. I, I, I worry for their souls, but I don't worry for this nation. All they have to do is have the fear of the Lord. King Nebuchadnezzar, I don't know if he ever bowed his hand to Yahweh till God turned him into an animal, but I know this, he feared the God of Israel. And you hear me, I'm about to make it really plain. Our church doesn't have to divide this time. You know where I stand on most things. I'm not quiet. But I have one agenda I'm asking you to focus on. And that is the relationship of the United States and Israel. Okay? There are many things that will affect the blessing of this nation. It's why I fight for life. It's why we fight for righteousness. But there is one thing that will affect the, the longevity and the future of our nation. And that will be our alignment with Israel. 
And you better watch for that spirit of anti-Semitism and that anti-Christ spirit who is gonna try to take hold of this nation from the head down, from policies to legislation to leaders that have been assigned to separate the United States from Israel in the year that God purposes to restore what has been stolen. So, you know, we'll argue over walls and taxes and racism and abortion. We'll argue over that stuff later this year. Can we just get unified around one one issue? That this is the year God meets for this nation to align with his nation because there's a revival to be poured out. It is not time for the spirit of the Antichrist to take this nation over yet. I know it's coming, but it's not this year. And God wants to reveal himself. And we are going to push back on that spirit as the ecclesia. That was not in my notes either. Can we just focus on one thing this year? So there's about to be this alignment. So much so I said this, the United States is in a leap year this year and I'm gonna teach this just so we don't go crazy in here because this is not my assignment. I don't wanna leap off this stage in the Holy Ghost. But we are entering a leap year in the United States. Every four years we have them because (laughs) this is so prophetic. Just hear the word of the Lord. Every four years, four, we have a leap year because for three years, time is stolen from you. You don't know it, but in our fallible calendar, we cannot really keep up with time. So for three years, you are shorted some time in your year. For three years, We have been shorted some time in our year and we're about to enter a fourth year and a fourth year is called a leap year and this is what we do in the United States. It's the year of the extra day. We add a whole extra day to our calendar to make up for time that was lost. Do you hear the prophetic alignment of this year? This is your leap year. This is the year God is giving you an extra day to redeem what has been stolen from you in time. It is a day to pay back what has been stolen. What's crazy is Israel also has a leap year, but theirs are only seven times in 19 years. It's not the same alignment, but that's not true for this year. I'm trying to show you it's the day of the sun and the moon. It's the fourth day. This year, Israel also has a leap year. And guess what? Israel's leap year is the same time as the leap year of the United States. They are both coming into alignment because at the same time, God is about to bring two nations into divine alignment, not by Kronos time, but by Kairos time. We are entering an epoch season where God is about to restore what has been stolen from his people and this nation to God be the glory. This is why it's an epic epoch. And I just want to say to you that when God gets ready to restore, he steps out of time. And God's restoration does not take the same time as the enemy. And this is worth shouting over. God's restoration happens in swift, fast movements. What it would take you a long time to do, God will do in a short time. Hence the phrase leap year, okay? If I walk, I get somewhere slowly. If I leap, I get somewhere quickly. And God is about to take a leap in the spirit and you are about to see the manifestation of Joel chapter 2 in your life and in the church. Are you ready? Joel chapter 2 he said I will restore to you the years the locust and the canker worm and the palmer worm have destroyed. God is saying in one moment what took the enemy years I'm going to take a leap and in one moment what the devil took a long time to destroy in your life you're about to enter a season of acceleration in the kingdom. This is your leap year. And God said, oh, devil, it took you years. It's going to take me about this long. And all of it's coming back. What you've been crying over, what you've been fighting for, God's like, hold up, hold up. I'm going to work outside of time. Just give me about this long. And it's all coming back. Your house is going to be restored. Your business is going to be restored. Your family is going to be restored. His bride is going to be restored. This nation will have a window of restoration. And so will Israel. God is about.
about to do it in a moment. He's about to work around the clock. So why did I read what I read? I'm wrapping it up right now. And see, I'm looking. I have no idea what time it is. I'll hear stomachs growling in a minute, and that will be louder than an alarm clock. God is about to take a leap of restoration. You're about to take a leap of restoration. And in one moment, God is about to open doors that no man can shut. And he's about to shut some doors that no man can open. And we're going to see in all of the chaology that God is about to bring order to the chaos. And he's about to bring order to the cosmos so that we are in divine alignment with his prophetic will. Because in case you didn't notice, you are living in the most exciting times of humanity. You are living through and enduring the times of rapid prophetic fulfillment and God's word. Heaven and earth can pass away and so can time, but God's word will never pass away. It will not return void. In fact, I just feel the, the need to prophesy this into the atmosphere. So shall be the word of the Lord that goes forth from his mouth. It will accomplish what it has been sent forth to do and it will not return void or empty. This is the year of fullness. God's word that has been sent out is about to come back full in your life. In fact, the Jewish people call leap year pregnancy year. They call it the year of pregnancy. And that is what that connotation means with that word. God's word doesn't come back empty. It comes back in fullness. It comes back in fruit. And I'm here to tell you what was in seed form is about to come in fullness in your life and in this nation because God's word is ripe. And it is ready for fulfillment. So this is why God is not bound by your age, your past, your present, or your future. All of those are inferior terms that the enemy used to bind you, to steal your destiny, to bring shame on your life. I don't care what happened in your past. God is not bound by your past. I'm not sure what's in your future, and you shouldn't be biting in your nails. God's already been in your future, and he's right here in your present. And all it takes is a yes to him, and he can reach back in your past and reach into your future at the same time pull redemption into your present and everything you think you've lost is restored in one leap because God is not bound by the lie of time in your life that's good news for someone who's sitting in regret you think your moment's gone you think you've screwed up too much this is your leap here this is your year God's gonna say I'm bringing what you lost right back around in front of you sweetheart I'm going to restore the years to your life so I'm finishing up Exodus 12 Pastor Lee you're gonna have to help me I got to talk to a rabbi because this bothers me and my research bothered me more. Now Adonai spoke to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt and he said, this month, this month shall be the first month of the year for you. This month marks the beginning of months for you. This month. And I thought, this is not the feast of Rosh Hashanah. This is not the Feast of Trumpets. This is Passover. Uh-oh. What happened? Because then I looked at the Feast of Trumpets, and nowhere does God say it's the new year. And I said, Lord, I need you to help me with this. So I began to research, and I discovered that Rosh Hashanah was not always new year for God's people. Passover was I mean, Rosh Hashanah, the Feast of Trumpets, was not always New Year. But due to the convenience of time, the New Year was shifted to Rosh Hashanah. And Rosh Hashanah, which is still a holy time, probably when Jesus will return, FYI. That's when the number changes on the calendar. That's when the chronological number changes on the calendar. But the truth is the Hebrew people didn't really name their months or keep days like the Jewish people do now. 
and Passover was actually meant to be the first month of their year. So you're like, Pastor Devin, this is bothering me. You're killing the shout. What are you doing? And this is what the Lord spoke to me. He said, Devin, Rosh Hashanah is the new year, but it's not the new year. It's the new year of time, but it's not the new year in the spirit. And I thought, okay, so do you want me to switch? Do you want me to start preaching on Passover? And he said, Devin, I want you to work outside of time. Quit trying to put me in time. I am the one who makes all things new. Some of you are tracking where I'm going. In Christ, new year can be any day. Okay, and this is why. Are you ready? Are you ready for where we're gonna land this ship? God said to me, Devin, Passover was the day the Lamb of God was slain. Jesus and the Lamb that symbolized him in the Old Testament. And it was the day of doors. It was all about the door. Everybody say four. Dalit, it's the door. It's the day of the door. And the children of Israel, they were in a long-term season of bondage. This is why I played that tambourine. This revelation's been in my belly. It's been just needing to come out. They were in 400 years of bondage in their homes. And on Passover was when the Dalit opened. And the door opened to their freedom from Egypt. Then they go out into the desert, but the door is still open. This is why we're going to shout over closed doors. And Pharaoh follows them into their new beginning. He follows them into their new season. And they get to the edge of the Red Sea, and here comes Pharaoh. And can I tell you what they did? They said, can we go back, please? Oh, this was burning in my heart at 5 a.m. Because some of you, God is about to slam a door you don't know how to shut. Some of you are ready for some doors to shut. Some of you in his grace and mercy, he's about to step in for you and shut a door you don't know how to shut. Because in their ignorance, they actually thought going back was better. And they were about to forfeit what they could not see, but what had been spoken. And let me just prophesy over you this year. Don't you be tempted in the chaology of transition to go back to what he is bringing you out of. You press toward the promise of his word and I'm here to tell you God in his sovereignty is about to shut some doors for his people he's about to padlock some doors so going back isn't even an option they said Moses can we just go back and Moses said that famous saying that Yahweh said the Egyptians you see today oh he's about to shut the door and on Passover, water became a door. And God said, Moses, stretch out your key, stretch out your rod out over the sea, and water unlocks, door opens. The first door they opened, right? God said, put the blood, come out of your home. They opened, but the second door, Yahweh opened. They come to the Red Sea, the Red Sea parts. They go across on dry land. Woo, they're celebrating. And Pharaoh's like, well, last time I was able to follow them in, I'm just gonna try that again. And the Bible says, God, it actually gives the connotation that God actually set Pharaoh up. God wasn't reacting to circumstances. God did it on purpose. He looked lured Pharaoh out of Egypt. He lured him to the Red Sea and he let him be ignorant enough to think he could step through the door that God had opened for his people. He just let him think that what worked for his people was going to work for him. And Pharaoh in his ignorance took one step into the water. He took two steps in the water and God said, hold up, let him come on. Let that devil come on. Let that enemy come on. This is a setup. He took three steps in the water. He took four steps in the water. He got in the middle of the Red Sea and God said, shut the door, shut the door, shut the door. He's not coming through this time. Shut the door. Somebody needs to praise him that this is the year. God's about to shut every door. Hallelujah. Somebody needs to praise him that you think the enemy has the upper hand for about Four or five years now, the church has been fretting, thinking the enemy has an upper hand. It's been a setup the whole time. It's been a setup for this moment. And I came to prophesy to you, God's about to shut the door on the enemy this year. And the Egyptians we see today, we're not going to see them anymore. This is why we dance.
sounds like Miriam. So Tamaya, so I prophesy this over your own life. God's about to shut some doors. No man can shut and they came through on dry land. This is it. You all can get ready. I should try to preach like Kevin today to make everybody feel more at home, right? I have no voice. God said, Devin, I'm here to tell you, new isn't defined by time. New is defined by my blood. New is not defined by by time. New is defined by my blood. What will open and shut the doors this year? The blood of Jesus. What makes all things new in your life? The blood of Jesus. What will break the curse that has been pursuing you? The blood of Jesus. What will close the door on cancer in your life? The blood of Jesus. I'm here to tell you God is breaking our mentality of time. And he is breaking us into a kingdom that the blood of Jesus is the definer of your new moment. So this is what we're gonna do. We're taking communion on the first day of the year. And I'd love to turn a flip and leap for you, but I'm telling you something powerful is about to happen because we're moving Passover to today. Because Passover is not defined by time. Passover is defined by the blood of Jesus. Am I going to celebrate Passover when it comes? Yes, but I'm going to walk in the anointing of Passover every day of my life. Yes, I am. So I think you got them coming in the door, but if not, it's really important you take communion today. It is our prophetic passageway into the new year. My heart hurts. I didn't get to do it at the conference, but maybe they'll all do it wherever they go. This communion symbolizes the Lamb of God and it's your passageway to your leap year. It's a passageway through the doorway and the same blood that opens the door no man can shut is the same blood that's about to shut the door no man can open including your enemy, including yourself when you're wanting to turn around. Nobody will undo what God is about to establish. And I want you to take communion today to release transition. God said on this night, on this night, everything's about to change. You do realize Passover is a feast of transition. You know, we're building the tabernacle of David And that ark came through a bloody transition. I was thinking about it this morning. David brought the glory back to the nation. And he tried to do it with a lot of hoopla and not any blood. And it didn't work. But the second time David took the ark in transition, this is what the word says. One, two, three, Four, five, six. Something dies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Blood is shed. One, two, three. One day, I'm going to figure out how many steps were taken from Obed Edom's house to the tabernacle of David. Because it was a lot. And I'm here to tell you the path of transition was bloody. But that time it was the blood of animals. And some of you think it's going to be your own blood, sweat, and tears. But Jesus already paid the way for your transition. There was a lamb that was slain once for all. Once and for all. His blood is enough. And his blood is what will cover this transition. Your transition is paved in a pathway of his blood. Your household's transition is paved in a pathway of his blood. Your restoration is demanded by his blood. Redemption is demanded.
covered by His blood. And today on this new year, it's the blood. It's the blood. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the blood that's unlocking. It's the blood that's unlocking the doors. So what I want to do when you gotta go, no condemnation. You can go back and watch live stream, get your own communion at home and walk through your front door. But I am gonna give an opportunity in here cause I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> my heart's gonna have to repent for trying to put God inside of my time. Jesus, forgive us for limiting eternity with time. And God, we allow you to step outside of time. We allow you to step outside of time. And what I wanna do is I'm gonna ask them to get those three crazy doors. And it's so magical because one of them by accident has the blood of Jesus painted on it. So put that one in the middle. Spread them out on the altar. This is just an opportunity. Don't freak out, not everyone is into prophetic symbolism, but I live my daily life by it. If God said this is the year of doors, I'm going with my family through a door today to testify to my children and the enemy. I'm going through a door he cannot stop. And when he tries to step into the threshold, it's gonna slam in his face because this is the year of doors for the bride. So I got these doors out and I thought, you know what? In a moment, we're going to pray and dismiss, and it's going to be like this. When you're done, go. But if you want to, before you go, if my family was here, I'd be taking my babies through these doors today. If you're a single mom or you're a college student, you can take yourself and your future family through the doors today because God's not bound by time in this moment. You might as well pray the door open. I would go through this door today and not only would I step through it, I would shut it behind me so the next person can step through it and shut it behind them. And what are we doing in this moment, Devin? We are coming into agreement with heaven and you are granting Yahweh full submission to shut doors in your life and to open doors in your life. Do not come through these doors if your heart is not submitted. When you come through, you're saying, Yahweh, over the Wallace house and over myself, I say, Father, today, I ask you to open doors in my life. And when I shut it behind me, I'm saying, God, I don't care if it hurts. I don't care if I'm afraid. I don't care if I have a hard time letting go. Father, in your sovereignty, shut every door that needs to be shut in my life this year. And then guess what? You can pray or you can leave. But we're all about to take communion before we do it because these doors don't open and they don't shut without the blood. Stand all over this place. So Abba, I thank you for this word. I give it to you, Abba. Yahweh, I give you this word. And Lord, I just stand on your word that when your word goes forth, It has the power contained within it to accomplish everything that was spoken. And I pray, Father, on this epic Sunday that the epoch would begin. Lord, that on this day you would release the year of 5784. And Lord, that the year of doors would begin, Father, over our personal lives, over redemption to the nation's church. Shanda besavakitai mosalavandiando sotabakiai. Yeah, Shandaya, you know what? We got to pray in the Holy Ghost right now. I'm releasing what I know to release in English, but I can't possibly wrap my mind around what God wants to do this year. So right while I'm praying, why don't you just pray in the Holy Ghost about what He wants to do through doors this year. Father, over our lives, over this church, over this nation, over the nation of Israel, Holy Ghost, we just want your design. Just grab somebody's hand in agreement and pray in the spirit.
to just hear the word of the Lord. Someone spoke it yesterday. The Lord just brought it back to my heart that Elizabeth and Mary were pregnant at the same time. And that when the sound of the mother of Yeshua was heard, the baby, the prophetic clothed and camel hair baby in Elizabeth's belly, it leaped. The baby leaped in her womb. And I just hear the Lord saying, there are two nations in his womb that will leap unto life this year. They will leap unto life at the voice of Yeshua this year. I prophesy there is a leap of life coming back to America. There is a leap of life coming to Israel at the voice of Yeshua. Pray in the Holy Ghost. And you better receive that for yourself. Some dead things are leaping back to life this year. Maya, 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 Maya. Where's Abby? Where's Abby? Abby, get up here. Abby, get up here. Oh my God, it's prophetic, Abby. Lama Shalamaya. Yama Sayada Maya. Yep, yep, yep. Abby had a baby in her belly they said was dead they said his heart wasn't beating but the devil is a liar and I declare Abby's baby leaps back to life she is a prophetic sign of what God is about to do in your house yes Jesus just praise him Abby give Abby a tambourine give Abby a tambourine the Holy Ghost just wants to pray this morning so I'm not interrupting him anymore I want you to pray in the spirit get in agreement and don't leave this sanctuary till you feel like you have prayed through what he wants you to pray because I'm telling you right now in this moment there is a spirit and an anointing of atmosphere of alignment in this atmosphere and you could be setting your entire year in order as you pray right now don't let some appointment keep you from divine alignment this year so this is how we're gonna do it I just want you to pray in the Holy Ghost and when you're done you're done and when you're ready and you feel the release of the Lord you can serve yourself communion and walk through one of these doors and I'm gonna slightly be organized okay these two sections that's your door okay these two sections that's your door the middle maybe a little bit of the middle the other sections to the best of your ability this is your door let's try to stay in our section so people can actually get through the doors and if you get slain in the door and it's been happening don't be offended if we move you over because i want every family to get through the door okay and let me tell you what else is going to break over this house just because you don't feel anything when you don't walk through the door don't walk out of here with a lie that nothing happened in fact you don't have to do something for god to do something just walk through the door out of obedience and believe in your heart that shift begins today now pray in the spirit 